what is that world that simulates, that travels back in time into the Martian landscape? What, what does the science reveal? So the science reveals that life is resilient. When I started that project, I told my husband, I said, this is going to be very fast. We are going in such nasty environment that we're not going to find anything. And you know, we'll back home uh, fairly soon. So 20 years later, we are still studying those environments. So that was your gut feeling like nothing, not much can possibly survive in those Well, the, the, the UV environment is so nasty, yeah. but there you find the same microorganism that made the very first fossils on earth 3.5 billion years ago. And they keep surviving. They developed an adaptation, uh, Swiss army knife, if you prefer. And so you learn about that. You learn about uh, what they are, how they adapt through times and through environmental changes, which is really important. Uh, what are their signatures? We learn to recognize them. We learn what kind of instrument we need, what kind of, of a signature, whether it's chemical or morphological or whatnot. So basically we learn how to explore, but I would say that to me, and this is a realization, interestingly enough, that came three years into the project, uh, I really woke up literally one morning saying, you know, we've been coming here for three years now, trying to understand how to search for life on Mars. But what this place is showing us is what's happening right here, right now on our own planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, by exploring those extreme environments, we are also reaching to places not too many people go. And so we are learning more about our own biospheres and uh, the diversity of our, our own life here on Earth. So uh, these are the two main things, you know, that I would say. What kind of life survives up there? On top of those volcanoes, it's about bacteria, you know, mostly. Is there something specific about that bacteria that's able to be so rugged? Yes, um, they have adapted to very high UV radiation. And it's not only because they are at high altitude, it's because early Earth didn't have an ozone layer. Hmm. So when those, the ancestors of those bacteria originated, they have to survive a world where you had lots of short UV coming down at the surface. And also lots of hydrothermal environment, you know, volcanoes and hot water, lots of salt. And you see all this toolbox still embedded in those microorganisms today, four billion years later. It's just amazing. And depending on the environment, they are going to switch some of these defenses adaptation on or off. The UV situation there is so nasty that here you have bacteria like that, cyanobacteria, you find them everywhere. It's, it's really something you find all over the place. But if you find them here in California, they will turn their protection against UV during the day in summer, mm -hmm. and they will switch it off at the end of the day. There in the Andes, it's so nasty that that thing stays on all the time. But if you take samples and bring them back here and start to culture them, like we did on top of a building, leaving them, you know, uh, you will see the second generation of this organism. They are starting to switch on and off again. So they are extremely adaptable, extremely rugged. And that's why they are still here. And probably that's why we are here, because <clears throat> life found ways. So is there some degree to which the harshness of the conditions enables the flourishing of life versus shuts it down? Well, it will shut down those that cannot survive. Obviously, you know, this is a statement that's kept in obvious right there, but it's also the survival of the fittest. And this is what evolution is, right? Um, so they are here because they were the most adaptable. And so evolution is going to show the path of the fittest. The one that cannot resist, they might have a good time for a little while, but then, uh, you know, we've seen this at much different scale and with complex life. 
not so long ago, a hundred thousand years ago, Neanderthal was side by side by Homo sapiens. Mm. But Neanderthal was completely adapted to a cold earth, to a glacial earth of the end of the Pleistocene. And when conditions change, it couldn't last. You think, I mean, there's still some mysteries around that, right? Like exact, is, exactly what, what were the harshness of the conditions. Um, I'm still really suspicious. What did Homo sapiens do? No, 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 no. It, I it really is, want to know. No, no. I, some I'm shady stuff you. that happened. Shady stuff happened. They <laughs> met. They bred together. They fought against each other. What humans do. You had to expect that. But the thing is that Neanderthal was completely adapted for a very long time to live at the edge of those glaciers. They were probably in a weakened situation when Homo sapiens came uh, and, and, and started to spread. So um, basically, this is what life does. It adapts, and if it cannot adapt anymore, it disappears and something else takes over.